Hi everyone, welcome to episode one of Dietetics Anonymous. Today I'm going to be baking a gluten-free Japanese milk bread. It's a little bit softer than your regular white bread, but it's good for toast and sandwiches and everything that bread is good for. So we're gonna test it out. I've actually had a few different Japanese milk breads, but I've never tried a gluten-free one. And since I am newly gluten-free, I'd like to test out all my different baking skills and make some fun food items that kind of make me feel like I can still have gluten. So without further ado, let's get started. So right now I'm making the water roux for the bread. Basically it is just a half a cup of water and two or three tablespoons of um, all-purpose gluten-free flour. I use Bob's Red Mills and you whisk it together in the pan and you cook it on a medium heat. I will put specific directions in the comments below, but this is the gist of it. When your roux begins to look like this, they mention it as leaving an active trail, so it's like kind of coming together. That's when you want to remove it from heat and let it cool to room temperature. Alright, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add some of our dry ingredients into the stand mixer. Backwards King Arthur flour that's gluten free. Um, I use this one because it's mixed already with a xanthan gum. Because if you don't have one that's already mixed with one, you're gonna want to get that or you have to purchase xanthan gum separately. Um, it helps with like the elasticity of the bread, it makes it a little bit more fluffy. So uh, we're using the three cups of flour. We are also combining in the cream of tartar, which calls for a quarter teaspoon of that. So we're gonna get our handy thing. All right, and there you go. Next, we are adding in our sugar and yeast. So, quarter cup of granulated sugar, let me get my quarter cup. And we have our sugar here. teaspoons of our yeast, which we have right here. Okay, so we're going to get a teaspoon out. Alright, so now that we've combined all of these dry ingredients, um, you will want to whisk them with a separate handheld whisk to combine well. So whisk. Boom. And I'm going to gently whisk because what I know from yeast in the past is that it is active and this one said active dry yeast and I don't want to like harm it. I don't know. But after we've combined it well, which if you can see here, I think it's pretty well combined, yeah, if you would say. Um, we're going to add some kosher salt and we're going to whisk it again to combine that. So the recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of our kosher salt, which I'm going to go grab over on this side. Salt. I'm going to whisk that again in so it's like nice and airy. Then we're going to add the vinegar, egg, milk, butter, and water roux and mix it in our stand mixer, which I'll bring you over there to do. So, I think this is mixed pretty well. I'm going to attach it to the stand mixer before I start adding everything because just from previous recipes, I feel like you're supposed to have that ready to go. Not just add everything at once. Just kind of one of the Let's get this baby rolling. Lock that in place. I'm going to put on a low speed. Oh, yeah. 
apple cider vinegar has been added. Baking secret, always crack your egg into like a clear glass bowl before you plop it in, just in case any shell gets in. We're gonna plop our egg in there. So it's slowly add in this milk. Yum! And cool it down to a room temperature. Melt it up. I lost a little room there, but I picked it up because it's going to be baked, so it's all good. This dough is coming together fantastically. I'm really excited about this bread. Let's bring up that speed a little bit. to go for two that way kind of incorporates the time that it's been mixing too so it's about 11 55 uh wait until like 57 let's say okay. while that's mixing i know you're not really supposed to walk away from your mixer but here i am doing it uh i'll tell you guys a little bit about why i'm gluten free so um i had a few different digestive issues go on uh i want to say like a year ago and they all stemmed around me getting these like extremely painful gas bubbles in my stomach to the point where like I couldn't even move and like it just was like completely excruciating and like I would be laying in like a cradle fetal whatever you call it position and like I would, couldn't even breathe it was just so bad and like um I also was having issues with every time I would eat I would get nauseous afterwards and I had like overly bloated and all this stuff so it turns out I do have IBS which I think everybody has IBS um, I'm studying to be a dietitian, obviously, hence the name of the YouTube channel, but um, I feel like IBS is kind of like, everybody has it, it's overly diagnosed, but I guess it kind of means that you have to be careful with certain foods because they irritate your gut and will make you have either constipation or a form of diarrhea, so I'm you know, talking about diarrhea while I'm baking, but um, yeah, so... I have IBS, I also have GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, also another common issue. But in general, these things go along with just changing things up in your diet. I noticed that gluten is a big cause of the gas bubble problems I was having, it's just my body can't digest it as well. Same with dairy and like all those things, which I think is pretty common. That's why everybody's on the gluten-free diet. I mean, sans the trend people who are doing it just weight which is not really a thing but um yeah so i've been gluten free for a few months now and honestly i haven't had a single gas bubble or like pain in my abdomen in this entire time so i'm really thriving love that but yeah so i'll probably do a video talking more about like ibs and like ways you can combat it and like all that stuff but that'll be later on today we're focusing on bread ironically so it says, once it's incorporated into the wet ingredients, turn the mixture up to high. We did that. Dough should be shaggy and tacky to the touch. It is. Uh, turn the dough onto a very lightly floured surface and divide it into three equal portions. We're going to lightly flour this surface. Kind of like, I know this doesn't look like, but it's pretty light. We're going to plop this over right here. Just kind of move it. Mm -hmm. All right. But, we're gonna take our dough and we're gonna plop it here on this lightly floured surface as the recipe states. By the way, I will link this recipe and give credit to its creator in the comments below. I did not create this recipe. I'm not a baker. I'm just a student on quarantine who wants some bread and cannot buy it because honestly, all the gluten for beds that I bought, I don't like, so try and make it a little bit. But, uh, that's not even true. I like the Trader Joe's one. It's decent. It does what it has to do for my, like, avocado toast or, like, my sandwiches. It's not great for grilled cheese, but it does what it needs to do. I'll give it that. Alright, so, we're turning it onto a lightly floured surface, dividing it into three equal portions, and working with one piece at a time. So, let's 
divide this into three proportions. So if it's like a ball, all right, let's roll. I think, oh, here's the idea. Let's roll it out and then, <laughs> okay. There we go. That seems like equal to me, right? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Wow, this is actually really nice dough. I've never felt a gluten-free dough that actually is like mushy like this. I'm having good vibes about this recipe. Okay, so it says, working with one piece at a time, pat out the dough into a flat disc about three quarter inch thick. I feel like that's about three quarter an inch thick. So then you want to fold the disc loosely in half from one short end to the other and stack, I'm like trying to get this off my hands, and stack the folded pieces of dough one behind the other. I read that right. Stacking them and placing them loosely in this pan. Sounds kind of weird to me, but I guess, why not? I'm just adding so much flour, I'm sorry. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. we'll drop in this. Definitely. This time it's gonna work. Yay! Kind of worked. Okay. And then we're gonna place this in here. So spray the dough lightly with warm water and cover the pan loosely with plastic wrap. All right. So we have our warm water, which it says to spray on top of the dough lightly. All right, so we did, I did like four spritz. And then it says to loosely cover it with plastic wrap. So I'm not even gonna wrap it around. See how I'm kind of just... And it says to place in a warm, draft-free location until it has reached about 150% of its original volume. So um, this area doesn't have any drafts and my heater is right below here, so put it right here. Oh, you guys can't see that. So we're gonna place it right over here. My heater is down there, so that should be a great location. So I'm gonna start some dishes and then we'll check back when the dough has risen. All right, so after an hour and a half, well actually a little bit more of that uh, waiting, this is what we have so far. So. It's definitely not pretty. It does not look like what we were looking at online for the recipe, but we're gonna bake it. We're gonna try it. I'm brushing it with a melted butter and honey glaze so that it has a little bit of a golden crust on the outside. I really don't think it's gonna come out looking great, but maybe it'll taste great. So we could just rethink the shape next time. But this is what we have so far, risen, and I'm gonna pop it in the oven for 45 minutes and we'll see how that goes. So. I'll check back in soon. All right guys, so the timer just went off on our bread, so let's take a look. It's obviously not gorgeous, but it's looking pretty good. We're gonna test it out, see if it's ready to be taken out, and if it is, then we'll put it on a cooling rack and cut this baby open and see how it tastes. All right guys, so I just took our bread out of the oven and it says to transfer it to a baking sheet and plop it right back in until it sounds hollow inside. So. I'm gonna do that and I'll check back in with you guys right after I'm done. All right, so the thermometer read 190. I know it's not gorgeous, but I think this looks pretty good for what it is, oh my God. Yeah. So we're gonna put it on a cooling rack. I'm gonna slice it open, test it, and let you guys know how it goes. All right, so honestly, the bread looks really good. I mean, the shape is not good, but like the actual physical bread looks really good. It's really soft and fluffy. Um, let's give it a taste. Yeah. Mm. That's pretty good. It tastes really, really good. It's definitely like um, very light and fluffy. And like, it tastes like a regular bread to me. Okay, I'm gonna it's gluten free. Yeah, I would say. This job well done. I'm gonna go put some butter on this and toast it and finish my essay. But yeah, 
I would say overall successful. Definitely don't understand the whole shape thing with the folding and stuff. Wouldn't do that next time. I would just make a loaf like normal bread. But overall, the recipe was really good. So props to that. I'm going to throw the recipe in the comments below. So comment, let me know what you think. And uh, let me know if I made any mistakes along the way that could have made this better. Because once again, I'm not a baker. Just testing things out. But thank you guys for watching. And I hope to see you guys soon.